Hi, I'm Kylie McDonough Scott. And I'm Rebecca Toller Stevenson. We're two friends and realtors in Kingston, Jamaica. Join us on the Island Realtors podcast as we talk about all things real estate in our island paradise. Welcome to another episode of the Island Realtors Podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Tullis Stevenson. And I'm Kylie McDonough Scott. Buying new construction or newly built real estate is our topic today. The appetite for Jamaican real estate seems insatiable and it feels like the world has become even more interested in our island paradise and its real estate since the pandemic began. Thank goodness we are building up to keep up with the surging demand. On today's show, we have my good, good friend, <laughs> <laughs> Director of Administration and Special Projects for Chemtech Development and Construction Limited, Mr. Carl Tuller. Hi, Carl. Thank you, ladies. Welcome, welcome. I feel so honored that you're here. Glad to be here. <laughs> well, Chemtech, which is Carl's company, was founded by Carl's father, the chairman, Mr. Sylvester Tuller. Back in 1989, when you were you were just a young and then, huh? Toddler. <laughs> <laughs> With an inaugur- inaugurable, inaugural, inaugural, inaugural development consisting of three bedroom homes in Keystone, St. Catherine. Since then, Chemtech has built up more than 4,000 homes across the 14 parishes. Right? No, across no. 14, 14 different, different gates. Different gates. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes, there we go. We're in about seven parishes. Okay. Whoa. Okay. How many parishes are there, by the way? 14. Okay, that's why I thought. <laughs> I was like, this script seems strange. Yes, Anyways. Right. <laughs> so right. they built up more than 4,000 homes across the island in 14 different gated communities, like Stonebrook Estates. Mm-hmm. You guys may be familiar with that. That's out in Trelawney. And if you're Kingston people... Six Six Ottawa, Mm -hmm. which we as realtors are very familiar with, um, just to name a couple. Carl, thank you for coming on the show. People ask me all the time if we're related, and sadly we're not. But Tuller is a lucky name in real estate, isn't it? It's a very lucky name, and I claim you as family. Thank you. I would love to be adopted. Okay, first of all, for all our viewers and listeners out there, who is Chemtech Homes? Well, as mentioned, uh, we're a real estate development company. We're about 31 years old now. And pretty much we do everything ourselves. We buy land, we subdivide land, we get agency approvals, we build, we sell. We have our own internal law firm. So we do everything Mm in-house. So we are a one-stop shop for homes. There you go. That's how he's going to save the money. They don't have to pay us realtors any commission. <laughs> <laughs> One stop shop. Noted. Noted. Okay. So, Carl, most of Chemtech's homes are sold pre construction. You guys put together a whole development plan. You launch things on the website. You know, you do your. Um, your launches, I guess, before coronavirus, you were doing big launches and, and stuff virtual like that. launches and since I know, coronavirus. I know you did yeah. that yeah, as well. Address. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. Can you explain to listeners what a pre construction purchase entails? Well, pre construction, as it suggests, it's, it's when a, a purchaser makes a decision to buy a home without actually seeing the home they're going to get. So, some developers sell from paper mm-hmm. and some do model homes. Mm-hmm. We actually do both. Okay. Oh, you do both. Okay. Yes. So, someone makes a decision to pay a deposit, enter into a sales agreement while they haven't actually seen their home as yet. So, that's what pre construction means. But they can come out to the site, look at the model home, and get an idea for what they are buying. For sure. Okay. All right. Um, if you, what is, what's the deposit like that you guys usually uh, Generally, ask for? We, we are at 10% for a deposit. Okay, that's standard. Mm-hmm. Okay, and if you don't go through with the purchase, is the, rep- is the we, deposit we, refundable? We generally refund um, deposits when sales fall through. Okay. Because um, you know you can sell them back. Is that standard? <laughs> it's standard for the most part. It's standard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we, don't have a, we don't have a selling problem primarily. So we're able to resell the house. So it's not that issue for us to re- really? refund the money. You're just like, if you don't want it, there are 10 people behind you. <laughs> we <don't, laughs> <all right. laughs> 
in its he's hum- being very modest uh, in its homeless way yes <laughs> yes that's basically what you're saying that's all right that's all right well buyers may see a new development advertisement and they may see it says subject to escalation in fine print okay um subject to escalation can you explain to our listeners what this actually means primary the escalation clause was put in place i guess to protect developers from changes in in construction costs Mm -hmm. especially in pre-construction when you make a deposit today it will be many months before your house is ready a lot can change in the marketplace by then, so the, the escalation is what secures the developer from taking a loss. And mm-hmm. especially in a country like Jamaica, where oh, our dollar our is dollar always is, devaluing or right. revaluing. Or by law, I think um, the maximum escalation is 15% the developer can charge. We only do a maximum of 10 So whatever changes, even if it goes above that, we absorb it. So when you guys first started out, um, were you still doing... Um, selling off of plan was that always your business um, model or bit no over the years we became credible okay of course and, and that's what happens uh p- being able to sell from plan it's a credibility issue yes we are gonna mm-hmm. jump to that yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. it is yes carl purchasing pre-construction it can be intimidating for first-time True. buyers can't it i mean i mean you say you set up a model home uh, but and you also sell off plan, but don't you find that most people want to like look and feel the mango, as we say in Jamaica? For sure, and um, that's why we do both processes mm-hmm. where we do selling off plan and the model. We insist on building our model units and we stage all our model units in a, to a way that it it gives the aspirational feeling. So when you go into our model unit, you say, okay, I want to live here. And yeah, and you know what you're buying. You see, oh, my bed can hold here. Mm-hmm. And that is the final sale that we find that convinces them to make a purchase because they see themselves in the space. Staging is so important. Very it much is. So. And I also find that, I mean, the buyers here in Jamaica, they do mm-hmm. want to look and feel and touch. touch and mm-hmm. it's, it, it, they do want that. Um, I'm going to ask you another question. What is the meaning of a defects liability period? And if so, what is Chemtex warranty period? The defects liability period is the period of time that the homeowner has to go back to the developer to voice concerns about flaws in the house, which are whatever it may be, um, cabinet faulty, plumbing mm-hmm. faulty. Mm-hmm. And that period is that there's a, Chemtech gives six months. Six months after possession? After possession. So because sometimes you wouldn't know this unless you're living yeah, in the house. Definitely. Right? And each mm-hmm. house, I'll tell you, as much as we aim for perfection of course things, things happen. happen things happen of so course. the six months in that period you're allowed to raise all your concerns and for us to schedule a period of time to get it sorted right 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 um I have a question to you buyers may see on a new development advertisement subject to escalation in fine print can you explain to our listeners what that actually means um escalation is a clause that get was created to perfect protect the developer really Against mm-hmm. changes in the construction cost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in pre construction, when you buy a house, when you pay a deposit today, chances are mm-hmm. you won't get your house till next year. Yeah, of course. Based on the time mm-hmm, to build out mm-hmm, in the, uh, this mm-hmm. large or scale. Longer, or, or longer. Or longer. Mm-hmm. So, what that means is that being in Jamaica, being that we import most of our construction materials, the prices change. By law, you're allowed to charge 15% for escalation, but Chemtech stops at 10, mm-hmm. and whatever changes in price, if it exceeds, we absorb that, that, that hit. Okay. Wow, okay. So oh. during this whole maddening time that we've just went through the last year, mm-hmm. you guys took a leap of faith, mm-hmm. and you launched a big project, but I guess you already had that in the works. It was already Prior in the works, to... Yes coronavirus um happening around the world and the new project that they have just fi- you haven't finished you're building it right now yeah, I'm trying to build it. right it's called the colbeck manor and it's out in old harbor you did this in october, october. and i remember seeing i remember billy jean your uh-huh. wife she was helping mm-hmm. along with the marketing and stuff i follow you guys on instagram and you had to change your whole way of doing things because usually you do a big launch uh, generally for every home house we do a big event uh thousands of people would come Mm -hmm. walk through the house obviously that wasn't on this year so we adjusted and we did a virtual tour Mm -hmm. a virtual launch sorry and 
We use various channels. We use Instagram. Use TVJ. TVJ, yeah. CVM, Zoom. Um, whatever you can whatever. get. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Facebook Every, Live. Everything with a screen. Anyway. YouTube, everything. And it was different because you didn't get the interaction with the purchasers or the would be purchases, We're which all is, missing which that right now. Which we enjoy. Yes. Mm-hmm. But we got the reach. So we saw that there was an opportunity to work differently and it worked. Oh, you certainly got the reach. You sold out in less than a month. Yes. Which you may ask, was that surprising? <laughs> Not really. Being that before open day, we had um, people who came in on site and registered to buy. Mm-hmm. So people were buying off plan. Mm-hmm. So before open day, we had over a hundred persons come in to say, "Okay, uh, when can I give you my check?" And we said, "No, no, hold off." And then um, we did the open day in October, late October, and then the people came. It just goes to show that there is obviously a demand for the type of housing that Chemtech provides. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Tell us a little bit about the, you know, the demographic and the property offerings of Chemtech. You Chem- know, like what? Sure. Um, primarily, we price have price point really. Uh, in Colbeck, specifically, the houses start at thirteen point five million and they mm-hmm. go up to eighteen million dollars. That's a two bedroom, one bath at thirteen point five. We have a two bedroom, two bath at fifteen point five. Excellent. And a three bed, two bath at eighteen million. You That's can't beat price. those prices. You see. That's right in the range of affordability right the sweet spot right the sweet spot. you know what i want to ask you when you did your whole marketing campaign which was a shift from what you usually do did you find that you reached out to more buyers overseas well historically we have a strong overseas purchaser mm-hmm. um I'll from from uk or America? all over um in previous developments we've had 56 percent of them being um overseas persons mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this in uh, in Trelawney where you have 895 units you have 400 persons from overseas, from overseas. wow so our our diaspora reach is strong and of it's course been the well there are more process. jamaicans abroad than at home mm-hmm. <laughs> so but what yeah. we found however is a change in the demographic of the purchaser we found that younger persons abroad are buying because they can afford it now they're more of fair with loan processes mm-hmm. they know that they have to buy it when they can qualify mm-hmm. so they're buying it earlier and then owning it and forgetting it. So it's okay. like they get in the investment, their return to Jamaica plan in higher gear quicker. From, okay. okay, really? Good. So we, Rebecca and I, um, we wrote out some pre-construction tips that we thought we'd share with our um, viewers, listeners. Uh, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. The first one you're gonna laugh at. <laughs> The first one we said is, if you're buying pre-construction, you should use a realtor. Of course. (laughs) (laughs) No. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I'm going to read what we wrote. All right. Use a realtor. When purchasing any property, whether pre-construction or otherwise, you need someone who will have your best interests as priority all the time. Your realtor will help guide you through the process. Now, we know some developers <coughs> may not use realtors to represent their developments because they don't need us I, uh, I, as they the, can for, sell for the record, property themselves. For the record, all my <laughs> Kingston projects uh-huh. are through realtors. That is true. There you go. I, I have worked on, yes, on your yeah. Kingston projects. Yes. Let's clear that up. But hold on. If I were to, if as a realtor, I had a person for... Um, one of your country projects. You just don't use realtors for those or um, you don't really need to? I don't need you to. You don't need to. But the buyer... Get it messy. Yeah. What I yeah. like to... What I was suggesting is um, the buyer overseas, if they want to pay us a commission to basically help walk them through the process of purchasing the property, mm-hmm. um, you know, they can, you know? And I think but that's a good idea. But have a... Um, a- in, in the states, I know you they have, have a buyers, yeah, right? They have buyers yeah. agents. We yeah. don't typically have that in Jamaica, yeah. but we're going to. I but I guess, so. but remember, I think talking, it's a good thing. We're talking to Carl about two things. We're talking to him about Chemtech, which is his company, but we're also just being in general talking about pre construction, mm-hmm. and that's why we have you on right. the show because sure. you know a thing or two about that. And you know, there are lots of pre construction <laughs> projects in Kingston that you know Rebecca and myself have been involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so many. And so it is good to have a realtor, especially if you're not even here I or if you're here. I agree. A real, the realtor's role is very important. It demystifies a lot of the unknown. Yeah. And also <laughs> it gives a lot of safety in terms of peace of mind to say someone is leading me in the correct path. Right. Or I'm on the ground. Someone yeah. who's on the ground. You know, even last week, Saturday, I mean, I went and did a walkthrough of an apartment. It's about to be handed over. The person bought it off of paper two years ago. And he just wanted me to go there, video call him, take video, take photographs, you know, and just so that he could see what it turned out, how it turned out, you know? I mean, that's what, that's what you pay us for. (laughs) So I have have another tip, another tip. This is a very important tip and um, it's called know your developer no research your developer. developer you have to ensure when you're buying property whether it's jamaica or anywhere else in the world that your developer is registered with the real estate board or whatever real estate governing body there is um because you know we've heard of way too many nightmares Night- Let's just nightmare, say nightmare stories, nightmare stories. people mm-hmm. say i'm a developer and they're not registered they don't know what they're doing you put down your good hard-earned money and yeah. And then you, you never get the product. You may never get the property. You may mm-hmm. get something not so nice. So you have to know your developer and find out what other projects they have done. You know, as you said, when you guys first started out, nobody knew you. Now, yeah. everybody knows you and exactly. you build up it's, credibility. It's a You're a household name. It's a process. Mm-hmm. Yep. Takes time. It takes time. Another tip we have um, for our listeners and viewers is finding out what restrictive covenants are in place for the development. Um, What are restrictive covenants? Okay, these are the clauses laid down by the developer which prevent the homeowner from changing how the property looks so that the development remains uniform. I'm sure we've all driven in certain parts of our beautiful island, Jamaica, and we have seen schemes or subdivision and you know we see nice houses all in a row and then there's always that one <laughs> right there's always that one when you you look and you go no that, that clearly was not allowed Definitely. how dare you you know <laughs> Right. So you really need to find out um, about the restrictive covenants so that the aesthetic is the same. And also, if somebody breaches those restrictive covenants, what kind of ramification, you know, what Reverse consequences, that, yeah. right, would there be? Um, you know, and of course, we love an extension here in Jamaica. We love doing extensions. So find out what, if anything, uh, modification wise would be allowed. That's a big tip. Another one you had mentioned before, Carl, is um, timelines on construction. Um, this is Jamaica. In fact, just last year, October. I don't know how you, you guys even built the model house because wow. <laughs> I think it rained in Jamaica rained, for 40 it, days it, it, rain, it was actually 35 days. It rained and it rained. And I want to go back to the point you made earlier about the um, modifications, modifications jump in very important sometimes homeowners don't realize what the developer is trying to do on the onset when they see the restrictions mm-hmm. um, in our developments uh, we insist on as much as a gated community we say look let us grill the unit for you so that we don't have 10,000 10, grill grills. designs oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. eight to see 10,000 I said, so look, awful you can't add on to the front so don't so we don't give a chance for you to add on to do something that's unsightly. And in Jamaican culture, I have hundred dollars to build, it costs two hundred dollars. I'm gonna start now, and the other hundred comes whenever. So you have an unfinished house. So these are the things that your neighbor is gonna suffer from mm-hmm. yeah. while you're doing your and business. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. So there are certain things that they may see and say, that's a, that's that's a bit rigid. I don't like, but they're for your investment. They're to secure your protect to protect, protect your property. investment. Yeah. Preach, yes. yes but it. you you do you mm-hmm. should also find out truthfully from the developer. You have to the developer has to state upfront how long is it going to take for me to build this place to give to you. Mm-hmm. And of course, you hold the developer to it. 
within reason. Yeah, I mean, because things kind of happen, over, like four to five things, days of rain. Things exactly. always go things wrong. Things always go wrong. <laughs> and I think if you have a good developer, they can forecast. They put in some forecasts, although I don't know if you did put uh, in a forecast for 40 days No, I did, definitely didn't. Have that. <laughs> that was not in the project sheet. No. And the reality of it is, as the developer really wants to close... Yeah, because they get their money. Yeah, exactly. Because we we get, all want to close. We only get 10%. 10% yeah, can be the house. Yeah, you get paid when it's all closed. So, so, yeah. so, so we really want to close. So don't think most developers are dragging it out. A lot of times, they just can't control all elements. Yeah, all the elements that are out there. And that includes labor or, you know, materials and availability materials. of materials. Yes. I mean, now, I mean, I think... My brother, he's he's kind of in the hardware trade, import, export, and he was saying to me that, you know, coronavirus will definitely affect um, availability shipping of materials because shipping costs have doubled and, yeah. you know, and that's... And people at the factories and stuff like it's, that. So. It's going to be, it's all going to happen, you know, so... All right, I have another tip. In, this is Jamaica, use an attorney. This is just the bottom line. I know Please. some of our, our people who are watching this or listening to this overseas, you know, it's an unusual thing because in America you can do a sales contract. You don't yep. need an attorney. I don't know what it's there's like There's escrow England. and there's this and there's yeah. that. Here, yeah. you got to use an attorney. And from the developer's standpoint, use an attorney. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you said earlier, you mentioned you have your own in-house attorneys, which is fine because, you know, the, the purchaser can, you know, save, I suppose, by just using your attorney. But um, they can't, the, my attorney represents me, so they can't use my attorney for themselves. Yeah, really? They, no. No, so, but you want to have your own, own attorney. attorney. So they, oh. so you recommend that people have, get their own I attorney. No okay, problem. you've heard it here from a developer. I have no problem with you using an attorney. It makes the process easier in that I have attorney speak to attorney. Yeah. Yes. So that gets yes. rid of the middle process. It's a middle process, but it gets rid of the de- us explain everything because he has a attorney to explain everything for them. Yeah. Exactly, and also I think um, for them to talk about to review the document because a pre-construction sales contract presumably is is different to an ordinary sales contract it will speak to Time you know that. times and this and that and you know you really need somebody to read it for you a lot of people may think you know they can do it that i, I can read a contract well you know how about no yeah <laughs> how about you don't three, do that Mistake. Huh? Page three, you're like mistake. <laughs> so I have a, I have another tip, right? Uh-huh. This is now when you have it's at handover now, and you're ready to um, get your place from uh-huh. your developer. Uh-huh. You're picking up your keys, and you know it's recommended that a walkthrough happens. Uh-huh. Do walkthrough. not take the place from the developer without doing a walkthrough. I'm sure you guys have a whole unit within chemtech finishing or, team yeah. what do they call a finishing, a finishing, finishing team. team that's okay. great so you have a whole unit of people who you probably say okay i'm handing over unit number 36 today go and walk through and i would say if you are a um, person buying take a contractor there with you or somebody that knows about building yeah. and just make Could sure be a friend you, you want to make sure that everything is the walls are lined up the windows are closing they're not leaking the plumbing is all right. You know, it's just good to because have Because I wouldn't have the eye to look for, you know, necessarily those things. the thing is, you're, you're pretty much going to be overwhelmed for that day. So mm-hmm. you won't see... You won't see all the little things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that independent contractor walkthrough accompanying you. Great tip. Great tip. Okay. Another important tip for pre-construction is knowing the running costs of the home. Okay. So once you get it, what will the property tax be? Um, and right and maintenance. maintenance. Let's talk about that because whatever the maintenance, I always tell clients, you know, if a developer is going to quote maintenance, is going to be based off of his budgets or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's projection. It's estimate. Mm-hmm. It's not actual. Yeah. And you know, it never ends up being what they say it's and going it's, to be. It's hard so, for the developer to predict. I mean, they can have a it. roundabout figure, but the truth is. You are in the business of building homes. You're not in the business of running a security company, um, dealing strata. with strata, pool, chlorine, all of those costs, <laughs> right. you know, just yeah. a general That's upkeep a of the complex. Thing. So you can't really 
hold the developer by the right. Name. Don't um, shout at them for yeah, that because they right. hold Don't. you on a price. And guide is given generally. We we're, we're pretty close to the number that we give based on our years of experience. Um, and the maintenance, as you know, is a cost a lot of people don't think about, mm-hmm. whether it's in the contract or not. And we, we generally build gated communities. So there's always going to be a maintenance. Of course. There's 24 hour security. There's going mm-hmm. to be a clubhouse with a gym, pool, all those things. Those things they cost their own. You have a property manager who works there every day mm-hmm. with staff every day, mm-hmm. security mm-hmm. company running the gate. So the, the numbers add up. They do. They do. But my whole thing is just don't get caught on the back foot, Mm -hmm. you know, and I always tell my clients, whatever you hear the maintenance going to be, just double that in your head. And if you're still comfortable at that point as that as a worst case scenario, then you're good to go. All right. Well, you know, I think I think that's it. Oh, no, but I have one more question for you, Carl. Mm -hmm. You have been successful in residential housing developments. Does Chemtech have any plans for anything commercial? Uh, as we speak, we're building a commercial center in Trelawney to facilitate uh, the homes that we've done there. In Trelawney, with our projects and other developers, there are about the last eight years, about 4,000 houses there, oh, wow. which would have a need for a commercial center in Trelawney. So we're building one right now. So right. So what, what would kind of the things be? I mean, maybe you um, can't say. Gonna but, have to like be honest, a, uh, we're just building the structure. We'll, Fill it, fill it when we're finished. With tenants. Yeah. Okay. With things that are necessary. Food like and supermarket, supermarket and pharmacy kind of and okay. And then te- how far is that from your development now? Uh, it's mi- seconds away. Well, it's okay. right adjoining. Because okay. what we did, we cut off a part of the property on the external part to put the commercial so everybody can access it. So it's on the main road. Okay. So all the developments, to make it viable, all... Trelawney can go there if they want. That's wonderful. That is yeah. wonderful. That's wonderful. And we have a commercial building to start this year in Kingston. Oh, okay. Hold on. I Not think f- I, I think I may We're know about. Yeah. We're about. I think I know a thing or two. Yeah. So um, not for sale. It's top <laughs> secret. No, no, top secret. <laughs> top top secret. secret. Yeah. So we just leave that for now. So. Okay. <laughs> well, I wish you all the best Thank with you. it. Thank oh, you. Hold on. Best with I it. I have a surprise before we leave. Oh wow. You get a. Oh wow! You, you get a Wait, present. You get, you, you get one too. I'm in the cool club now. We got merch. We got, we we got, got merch. merch. You got merch. So when I Thank when you. I brought them home last oh night, God. Elliot, mm-hmm. my son says to me, he's like, "Mom, you have merch." Because he's, he's obsessed with the merch on MTM. Of course, uh, big up yourself, ta- yeah. Tammy and Wayne. Big up yourself. So, but before we here. let him go, we have to tell our viewers and listeners about our property of the week. Oh, okay. Mine What's is yours? mine is not a pre-construction, but I have a <laughs> I have a nice apartment that was once pre-construction. At- <laughs> It once was for sale long, long, long ago. Um, it's, at, it's, at, it's at the Valhalla in, um, okay, okay. on Graham Heights, Kingston mm-hmm. 8, close to Barbican, a minute from Barbican, and it's a ground floor apartment for $28.5 million. And I have something that is new construction, not pre-construction. Um, I'm talking about Parkhurst One. Okay, Parkhurst One is essentially located high-rise building off of Waterloo Road. In Kingston 10, it's really close to Devon House, embassies, shopping, dining, a real lifestyle building. It's eight stories. There are 52 units there. One beds, two beds, and three beds. The building has incredible amenities. It has a rooftop infinity pool, very fabulous and sexy pool. Um, Two sky garden terraces, gym. It's very safe, very secure, very fabulous. There are only a few units remaining. So if you want to get in on that, you better call me. And one last thing before we go, because we really have to go, but we can't go unless you guys promise to follow Chemtech on Instagram. They're Chemtech JA Homes on Instagram, and their website is Carl. What's your website? Chemtech Homes. K E M T E K Homes dot <laughs> com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is this Island Realtors, and follow us at Island Realtors Podcast. And Rebecca and I each have our individual um, Instagram handles on Instagram. Yes. Kylie the Realtor and Rebecca dot sells real estate. Don't forget the dot until next time. Bye. Stay safe. Yeah.